Hey guys, Web618 here, long time no speak. So we're gonna do an update video today on Bitcoin. It is the 1st of July, 2019, just gone 8 p.m. UK time. All right, long during updating Bitcoin, we're gonna run through my long-term count and short-term count. Um, so I am still very bullish within Bitcoin. Obviously we're seeing this pullback from 14K uh, still retracing. Uh, I do expect a bit more of a retracement. In today's video, we're going to say how far we can expect price to come back roughly and also what kind of indicators we can look out for to justify um, a long position. So that's essentially what we're going to cover in today's video. So if you're interested, then stay tuned. Alright guys, so let's get started with Bitcoin. So, well, first of all, just want to say uh, apologies. It has been a while since I've done a, a public YouTube video. Uh, of recent, I have put a lot of attention into uh, the Cryptology group, which I announced on Twitter and YouTube. So you're probably familiar with it. Um, that's where I'm essentially doing weekly updates on the top 15 market cap cryptos. Um, so I've been putting a lot of attention into that, um, setting up the, you know, organizing the Discord, responding to emails, queries, uh, really getting things organized there. Um, so yeah, it has taken up quite a bit of my time. But now we've got a bit of free time. We'll do an update on Bitcoin. Uh, so yeah, and if you are interested in joining the, um, the group, the Discord, which is growing really, really nicely. Um, yeah, visit wave618.com where you can find all the information you need regarding the group and also my educational course. All right, but without further ado, let's get started on Bitcoin. So my long-term count, those of you who have been following me for some time will know that I've got this WXY count. So that's W being this three-wave move down, X-wave being the descending triangle, it's A, B, C, D, E. And then our Y wave was a further three legs down, where the Y wave was in fact a 0 0.382 uh, extension of wave W. So a very nice Fibonacci relationship. We then um, found our bottom here around 3.2K. And for me, the way I use my strategy is I look for the breach of the uh, pitchfork before having that confirmation that the downward trend has been broken. And you can see that once this upper warning line got breached at around this level, at around 5.5K, that is when I announced that I've changed my bias from bearish to bullish. And you can see very nicely price uh, went very parabolic, absolutely cut through this horizontal price action, this price range around 6K to uh, 7K, cut through it very nicely. I was expecting some degree of a pullback at that level, but obviously there's a major show of strength we cut through. And since then, you can see we've pretty much curved out a very nice parabolic move. And people aren't that familiar with these moves. Those of you who didn't trade crypto in the past are a little bit phased by this and are thinking, wow, we're seeing uh, record levels on the RSI, really overbought levels. Everyone's afraid to go long. Um, and yeah, I, that's fair enough. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, these kind of moves in crypto, it is going to scare you off. But to be honest, I'm not very interested in the RSI when it comes to cryptos. Um, as you know from previous videos, I'm expecting this is a major wave five that we're in now. And in wave fives, um, they go exponential, they go vertical. They, so the RSI is going to be off the scale. And if it's not off the scale, I'll be disappointed, to be honest. So um, <clears throat> certainly, yeah, I wouldn't... Um, if you're going to pay a lot of attention to the RSI, you're not going to capitalize on any of these moves in crypto. It's simple as that. Um, yeah, so let's talk about what price has done. Let's explain this price action. And I'll, try, I'll justify why I still believe that we're going to turn uh, further bullish. So essentially, the count that I've got for this move up to here is, uh, well, first of all, we've got I've got this as our initial impulse, our wave one, corrective price action, wave two. And I've got our wave three finishing here. Now, from previous videos, you'll know I had another pitchfork which looked at the move starting from here, and then it looked at this wave two of this um, 
so the correction of this initial impulse was used to create a pitchfork and price was really adhering nicely to this pitchfork. Now the reason I've got my wave 3 finishing here is because just using uh, percentage fibs you get a very nice 4.236 um, relationship between this move up to here and this move here. So for example if we look at the percentage move up to here so roughly around 35, 33 to 35% and then looking up, looking at the move from here all the way up to here, around 150%, it does work out roughly around very close to the 4.236 extension. And you can you can easily count five waves within that. You've got your one, two, three, four, five waves up to here. So along with a nice five wave count um, with that 4.236 extension, it's reasonable to say the wave three finished here. And considering the fact that we did see a major pullback, that said it was a uh, it still continued to propagate upwards in the a fashion of a, a running flat. So it was an A B C. So that's the wave count I had for the wave four. It was a truncated pattern, which I explained in previous videos. It was truncated, and the way I knew it was going to truncate is because Ethereum had finished its wave four, and um, it actually finished without a truncation. Uh, and it was clearly due to start moving up following the completion of that pattern. Um, so yeah, that's how I knew it was going to truncate around this level. So since then, we've got our, um, our 1, 2, 3 and wave 4 finished. And now we're in wave 5. Now wave 5, as I say, it's usually the biggest uh, and most explosive move within crypto. And so of this wave 5, so far I can count very nicely 5 waves up here. And there is a pitchfork for that. I'll try and find that in a moment on the shorter time frames. But um, <clears throat> so let's first of all zoom in on the four hourly. So here I start my count here. This is the where. So this moved down. Let's just label it. This wave four was an A, B, C, where the C wave was truncated. So the C wave is typically five waves down. And I was expecting, um, as with Ethereum, it was five waves down. It came down in a diagonal converging price action pattern. And here you can see we've got a one, two, three, four, and then the fifth wave failed to come lower than the third wave, creating that truncation. Um, so this is where I've got the end of the wave four. So this is where I start my count for the next five wave move up. So I've got this as a one, two, three, four, and then the fifth wave finishing up here. Since then, you can see a nice pullback. And essentially what I'm looking at now is this is our first wave of the wave five, the final move up. Um, so I am this being a wave two, it can retrace. As I say, the rule with Elliott wave is that it can't retrace more than 100% of the wave one. So it can't come down lower than 7,500. Okay, that's where wave one starts. Obviously, I don't think it's gonna come down quite as low as 7,500, but technically, I just want you to know that in terms of this move being invalidated, it would have to come down lower than 7,500. So, um, yeah, so I've got this five wave count up to here. Then we obviously seen a really sharp pullback. Now let's zoom in further. I think we'll actually have to go in on the 15 minute to look at this. So this is something that we were discussing in the Discord in depth um, and we all agreed that there was a nice a b c play out um, so that being a b and c down to here and then following on from there this did not look impulsive at all it looked very corrective and there's obviously that question oh is this going to be a, a one two three and then a fourth wave, and then a fifth wave come down. Well, that was always a possibility until obviously this wave came up past um, where A wave came down to, so kind of invalidated that impulse move down um, and preventing this from being a wave four. Obviously, you can argue, is it going to be some kind of expanding diagonal? However, it's a very unlikely play out. Um, so yeah, the odds are much more in favor of a um, a WXY at this point. So 
just taking that off. So I was very happy with calling this a W down to here, X wave up to here, and then the Y wave is gonna bring us down further. Now the big question on everyone's mind is how far down is it going to go? Well, first of all, I just wanna make it clear. The fact that this is three waves down tells us it's, it's corrective, yeah? So it's not gonna be a humongous move down. We're not gonna see price coming down to around 5,000, anything like that. If this was obviously a five wave move down, this, this was a one, two, three, we saw a four and then a five come down to here, then I'd be getting concerned about a big retracement. Uh, but obviously we only saw the three wave count down, then we've seen corrective price move up to here. And now I'm expecting another corrective wave coming down further. All right, so as I say, let's talk about how far we can expect it to come down. Let's zoom in on the, well not zoom, zoom out rather on the hourly time frame. So this is the move up that we're retracing at present. So starting from 7,500 roughly. Uh, so let's do our Fib retracement tool. There we go. And so we're pretty much very, very close to our 0.618 retracement. That's at 9,900. Um, <clears throat> so that's at 9900 and the other way uh, of determining where price is going to come down to obviously you can do your Fibonacci extensions so if that's our wave W extend that from where wave X finishes and then so these are your Fib extensions so any of these can get hit typically with a WXY any of these points can act as reversal. So often the 0.618 will act as reversal. However, unlikely, because it's only just about formed a lower low than the uh, preceding W wave. Um, so certainly I will want to see it's at least the 0.786 tested, um, but certainly it can come down to hit the one-to-one -one ratio, the 1.236, 1.382. Now the 1.382, that's getting a little bit close to the bottom of the where the whole move impulse move originated. So I don't see this getting hit at all. 1.236 would be probably the worst case scenario for this uh, retracement. And that's around $8,000. Um, could it go down that low? It's certainly possible, certainly possible. So if you are personally, when I'm looking at longs, I'll be very cautious about leaving myself room for a potential further pullback, um, certainly below, just below around the 8,000 mark. Um, there is obviously horizontal um, support of the wave one top here. So you see a bit of a range around here where that will act as a bit of support. Uh, likewise, another bit of an order block around this level here, which is our uh, wave four of the impulse moving up. And that does actually coincide, the bottom of this order block coincides with the 0.786 retracement. So that's at 8,800. So that's another key level to look out for. Um, now there is a, a pitchfork that I'm also following uh, with this move down. So let's just have a look at, I've got them saved here. Okay, so this is the pitchfork for the Y wave and it's actually adhering to um, the original pitchfork, which is means it's pretty impulsive, the move. Um, So, so far, we've got this as being, let's just enlarge it a little bit. So if this is a, um, a three wave pattern down to here, to make our W, X is corrective. We expect the Y wave, it should also be a corrective move. So actually so far, this has been, if this is our first impulse correction, the next impulse, it's looking very, very impulsive, and it's actually come down, I think, beyond the 1.618. Okay, as you can see, the 1.618 extension is here at 10,000, uh, well, 10,400 roughly. So we broke down below that. We then retested it. It's then acted as resistance, and very easily, I see us potentially coming down to the 2.618. That is a level where we could start to see a bit of a turnaround and that's at 92.50, uh, okay? So that's another potential area for a possible turnaround around 92.50 roughly. 
9400 as I mentioned in previous videos was a really really significant level uh, so that also offers a very significant horizontal uh, support level um, okay so I'm just going to summarize all the potential areas of reversal first of all um, so that's one pitchfork that's just actually let's get rid of that fib tool let's hide this pitchfork there's another larger pitchfork that I want to demonstrate so not that one same one okay so this is the pitchfork that I want to demonstrate so this is playing out like a WXY and at the moment we're adhering to this shift pitchfork shift pitchfork is essentially used to track uh, corrective price moves so rather than impulsive moves it tracks corrective moves so again this is telling me that we are uh, because price is adhering nicely to this shift pitchfork is further giving me confirmation that this is just a corrective sequence so further giving me that uh, conviction that we are going to see a bigger bounce and take out these all time well this high for the year of around uh, 13,800 um, so certainly on the pullback I will be looking for um, I can see the median line getting taken out pretty soon so in the next bit of support would be around the lower median line and I think probably I'm, I, I can't see us coming down as well we could potentially test the lower warning line however if it is to test that I would have to do it very soon which I don't see it happening so and the lower warning line if it were to test it later probably that would be too far down that's at 7500 at this point so that's retracing way too far I think more likely we see a bounce off the lower median line so these are all the things I'm looking out for so first of all we've got a a one-to-one -one fib extension at around 8800 and there is a bit of a confluence with this um, lower warning line here so this is around 80 8900 8800 8900 around here so that's one place that I'll certainly be looking very closely for a potential turnaround um, but essentially the most important thing to look for to confirm a turnaround is high volume we really need to see volume come in uh, on a high level now obviously we did see a bit of a spike here but I want to see the volume on this low should be higher really than the volume on this low yeah and I want to see really really convincing uh, impulsive move up now I did start to see some volume coming in here it did make me make me think you know if we saw more volume come in um, it could have easily marked out the bottom here however um, yeah I, I would expect more volume to come in and I think overnight there's not going to be much volume coming in so there's a very good chance that we come down lower here obviously if we suddenly see a hell of a lot of volume come in this could easily mark out the bottom but volume is essentially what validates uh, a reversal so that is what I'm really going to be uh, focusing in on so I've marked out the, the key kind of turning points I'm looking out for obviously this pitchfork is very important to me the lower warning line uh, not one line the lower median line is one um, bit of information I'll be looking out for as well as this fib extension tool where we've got a one-to-one -one relationship with the lower median line here uh, but another key chart if we just take a look, quick look at uh, Bitcoin futures um, so with Bitcoin futures it's important to know again this is the move up from 7500 up to 30, 30, well, around 1400 um, there's a gap here that's not been filled so this is at 8500 so that's just slightly beyond the 0.786 retracement um, <clears throat> so typically Bitcoin does like to fill its gaps um, since futures have come into play it's generally always done that you can see we have just come very short of filling this key gap here um, but then the next key gap is at around 8500 so for me I'm not you know I'm being very cautious I want to see some high volume come in and really I'd be a little bit cautious until uh, you know thinking about the possibility of this 8500 uh, being tested just to close this gap um, 
certainly you'd have to favor the probability of that happening based on the fact that it's pretty much always happened in Bitcoin. So yeah, something to look out for there. Um, so yeah, using the Bitcoin futures to uh, the 8,500 level is a key level to look out for. Um, so I'm not going to give an absolute number saying it's going to hit this point and bounce up. I can't, I'm not going to do that. I mean, I, we have to monitor price action as it comes in. I can give ballpark figures as to what I'm looking at. And I think I've made that clear. As I say, I'm looking at a range between 8,500 to 8,900. I'm looking around that range for a potential reversal, uh, essentially using that lower median, uh, low yeah, lower median line on Bitcoin um, at around 8,900, probably going to act as key support. So once price does eventually wick down, bounce off a key level, I will probably want to see price above this lower median line before starting to add long positions. So that's essentially what I'm looking out for. I say there's, I know there's people there who want an absolute number saying price... Uh, where price is going to come down to. That's not going to happen. That's not how trading works. It's a dy dynamic process. As information comes in, we can um, we can come up with more accurate targets. But at this moment in time, uh, there's variable levels that it could reverse. But as I say, the key thing for me um, to say from what I've seen so far is that this is just corrective price action so far. Uh, and at the moment, we're just seeing a WXY play out. And... Um, yeah, once the median line breaks, next support would be the low median line. So that's probably the most important indicator that I'm focusing on at the moment. It would be this pitchfork, this downsloping pitchfork. All right, guys. So, um, yeah, I hope that gives you a bit, of, bit more information. I uh, hope it helps. So if you've liked the video, leave a like. And uh, if you've got any queries, feel free to put it in the comments. And I'll uh, try to get back to you as soon as I can. All right, guys, so I think I'm going to wrap it up there. All right, take care.